Hello everybody, it's me again, Mike, the Mr. Beard, and I am back today for part two of Rated Battleground Basics. Today is going to be about one add-on, Battleground Enemies. Again, this series is for people who are new to RBGs or want to just brush up on some of their skills or want to learn more about what they can get out of these add-ons. This is going to be a little bit of a longer one, so we're just going to jump right into it and get going. We're going to open up the menu, customize it, go over some of the features, and just get comfortable with the visual style and layout of the add-on. You can open up Battleground Enemies by typing forward slash BGE. This is what you'll see when you first open up Battleground Enemies. The first thing you're going to do is go to Enemies. You're going to go to 1640. It, this will be enabled. Disable it. Same thing for Allies. Essentially, this is for the Epic Battlegrounds. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle to Test Mode. Go to the drop down, click the first option, 1 to 15. Click Toggle Test. And then all the windows will pop up. You'll see that there's a lot of animation going. If that's confusing or overwhelming, just click this. If you want to see the animations back in action, just click it again and it'll continue through. The key feature of Battleground Enemies is it allows you to target enemies or allies with this simple UI. When your target caller calls for a target, rather than trying to find them in the midst of combat, you just go to the list and click. In this instance, we'll say that the shaman, the first shaman here, is going to be the target. I can just click that and I'll be on target. Everyone's battleground enemy list will be the same. So shaman number one for me will be shaman number one for you, will be shaman number one for everyone on my team. So there's not gonna be any confusion as to who we are targeting. You'll also be able to see the enemy composition as well as their spec and what role they're playing. This is very useful at the start of a match, so you can see who you're up against. You can see what kind of composition they're probably going for, if they're going for a heavy melee cleave, if they're going for an AOE cleave, mage cleave, if they're going for a death grip. All these different types of setups, you can kind of identify, okay, how are we gonna play around this? How do I play around this? For instance, if you're playing on a flag capture map and you're a rogue and you see that the enemy doesn't have a druid tank, you know you can get out into the field and start harassing their tank right off the bat. Whereas a pose, if you see that it's a Jura tank, you know you're going to want to hang back in your flag room and wait for him to pick up because he's going to be stealthing all the way there. Now you'll see these bars. These bars will show the health values of all your enemy players as well as your allies. We're just going to be focusing more on the enemy side for now and then we'll get into the ally side later. If you are on a flag carry map or Kathmandu with the orbs, you'll sometimes see this symbol right here on certain players. This is to indicate if they have the flag carrying debuff or a stack building that would they take increased damage. These numbers represent how many people are targeting that person. This is really good to make sure that everyone is targeting the right enemy. On the right hand side, outside of the health values, you'll be able to track the enemy's trinkets. If they have the gladiator's medallion, and it's on cooldown, you'll be able to track how long their cooldown is going for. This also goes for racials. You'll be able to see the list of racials here. Now, Battleground Enemies isn't just for DPS. It's also very useful for healers as well. As a healer, it's gonna be kinda of hard to track who's about to take big damage. Utilizing the target feature, I can track my, my team's trinket cooldowns as well. Another useful feature for your allies is when your allies die, you can track their res timers. So if you're dying in a team fight and you want to get up right away, but you notice everyone else is dead, you can track how long it's going to be until your team is at full strength again and ready to move as a cohesive unit. So I've toggled on the test mode again so I can go over some other features. We're going to be looking at the enemy side in particular for this. You're going to notice that while this test feature is going, Sometimes the spec is being replaced with a crowd control ability duration. And the way that this works is if they're in crowd control, you'll be able to see how long they're in crowd control for. These icons are indicative of the diminishing returns of the crowd control. So if I see someone has been CC'd, I can see that the next CC that they're going to take, it's going to be the next level of the diminishing return, either the half or the quarter. In your enemy tab under the 1 to 15, if you go down to DR tracking, you'll be able to color code these as well as put positions, customize the timers. We'll go through all this a little bit later on in the video. This is just to get comfortable with it. 
If you don't know what your DR is tracked with, I highly recommend going to the website dr-wow. Links will be in the description below. This website's a little outdated, but it still has some really relevant information. As a mage player, if I want to see what my CCs share a diminishing return with, I can go down for my polymorph and see these are all the other CCs I'll be able to see what my spell is categorized as. A polymorph is categorized as an incapacitate. Anything else that is categorized as an incapacitate will share a diminishing return. So say you are assaulting a base with a monk and a mage. When you go in, you're not going to want to have the monk paralyzed a target first because the duration of the paralyze is only 4 seconds. The duration of a polymorph is 8 seconds. If I polymorph someone once, it's going to be 8 seconds. The next time I do it, it's going to be 4 seconds. And now because Paralyze and Polymorph share a diminishing return, if I polymorph off the back side of a Paralyze, I'm not going to get my full 8 seconds. I'm going to be on my half duration DR. So I want to make sure that I'm using the Polymorph first, and then the Monk can follow up with the Paralyze afterwards. So now that we've gone over the basics, we're going to toggle the test mode off and we're going to go through the general settings. So you can have uh, arena frames if you're into doing arenas as well, the lock, the color targets, you can highlight, change all this stuff. Now getting into the nuts and bolts of this, if you want to change your scale, that is changing the scale of it. I just keep it at one. In health bars, it'll have the name of the player, their role icon, target indicator count, which is this right number that we talked about, the power bar. You can enable the power bar here. Some people find it useful. I find it a little bit distracting personally. I keep it off. You can also change the thickness of it if you want to see it more clearly. Because of the way that I have my nameplate set up, I can kind of see power bars a little bit more clearly when I'm fighting. Trinkets, the positioning is going to be if you want it on the right-hand side, if you want it on the left-hand side, uh, where exactly you want it. Racials, same thing. You can also filter which ones you actually want to track by enabling filter. Same thing with the specs. I can look at the specs. I think this is the most important one to have on so you can see what you're up against at the beginning. And the DR tracking that we talked about, the border colors. Uh, this is where you can customize. I think by default it's blue. I have mine set up to green because it's easier for my eyes to catch it. Uh, you can change the positioning, how it counts down, if you want to show the numbers, if you don't want to show the numbers. Uh, the filter, again, if you just want to track what your DR shares a return with. Enable spawn retimers, definitely have that enabled because you won't be able to see that for your team if you don't. And for your allies, it's all the same things. So you can go through everything. So now that we know what enemy battlegrounds looks like, we're going to go into a game and we're going to see how we can utilize it in a PvP scenario. So if you're sitting back and defending, what you can do is you can scroll through and click on all of these players and see where they are on the battlefield. This is really useful because if you have stealth units, such as a rogue, I can now see, oh hey, the rogue's out. The rogue is over at ruins. He's smoke bomb. Cool, I know where the rogue is. That's good, I can tell my team. Rogue is ruins. I can also say, hey, the druids are, one of the druids is, missing. I don't know where it is. We have to be mindful of that stealth unit. I can also see that that tank is missing. We have two stealth units that are missing that we have to worry about. It's also useful to track enemy movements, like that warrior. I can see that that warrior is going to quarry, so I can call that out to my team. And again, if you're sitting on defense rather than just twiddling your thumbs, trying to figure out what to do, watching Netflix, scrolling through this side panel, and communicating with your teammate, saying, hey, this is where the enemy is, I see this stealth unit here, I see that stealth unit there. You can give that information to your target callers, to the rest of your team, to make informed plays. As a demon hunter, like this cat over here is, they should constantly be going into Spectral Sight to look for the movements of the stealth units. If you click on the unit frame and nothing pops up, that means they're invisible. So that's something you have to be mindful of. Are they defending? Are they going to be coming out to attack? Okay, this guy's over at farm. That guy's over at farm. Again, another one missing. There's 
uh, I just saw that there was a bunch of people going down to gold mines. I can now call out that there is a incoming by right clicking on it. And I can just say there's four. Four going gold mine. So I have a feral druid here, that rogue. See if that rogue's gonna help me out. Yeah. Just had to get his attention real quick. So I'm always keeping an eye on on the flag. I'm you're gonna see that I'm never doing this and just focusing on the fight. I always have my focus kinda like this. Try to get both of them in, see what's going on, see, have the flag in my peripheral. We'll go over how to properly defend a flag in another video, but this is just to give you some ideas right now. During this offense, I can also see who are we targeting? Are we targeting just Cow or are we targeting the Rogue? We're not targeting the Rogue because I'm the only one targeting it right now, so we're focused on just Cow. So that means I can be using some CC on this off target. So now we can have a cleaner go on this guy. No one was targeting him. I know it was clean to use that. So now that we've gone over all of the add-ons, such as capping, reporter, and battleground enemies, I'm going to demonstrate how I utilize all of those add-ons at the same time during this attack on Quarry. So with capping, I see that we are currently down and that we need another base to catch back up and be able to win the game. I'm using my reporter right now to see my team is all at the middle and they are assaulting them right now and the rest of my team is able to say, hey, no one's coming to you right now. Like, you're fine. You're fine. You're good at Quarry. And I'm able to use Battleground Enemies to see that the Bear Tank has already used a lot of his big abilities. He's already used Trinket, he's already used Ursox. I can see that his, his he doesn't have a racial hat to worry about. So all I have to do is just play smart and then I can take the base. Okay, so Father Lynn sticks out, go back onto the Paladin. Watch a flag at the market as well. Watch a flag, 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 flag. Yep, it's coming. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is there a PR available? Yeah. Yeah. No. In I'm six seconds. Even. You got it. It's fine. Oh, I got nice. it. That druid's being a star at the uh, market. No. Nice. Good good job. Job. Okay, yep. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. In the next episode, we're going to go over the intangibles of RBGs, something you should be thinking about before you even step foot. And I swear, after that video, we will jump into actual gameplay or map analysis. We'll see. Anyways, gotta love you and leave you. See you in the next one.